Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today, well today it's all about the Wharfdale Diamond 12.2 stand mount speaker. When I hauled these speakers up to my apartment, the weight of the box, it was two in one box, was maybe they sent me the next model up or something because these are pretty freaking heavy. But no, they with the 12.2s and they, well they weigh 18 pounds each. That is definitely above and beyond what you usually get for speakers that sell for $4.99 a pair. But, you know, weight may be sort of a crude way of determining sound quality or build quality, but it's not the worst way to do it either. <laughs> but anyway, they, they certainly lived up to that first impression. The cabinet build quality, just in terms of solidity, wrapping your knuckles against this box, it feels very solid. They make a point about computer optimized bracing and blah 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 you know that's just all marketing bs for the most part but in this case i think it's real they do feel unusually well built for a speaker in this price class now the diamond 12.2 uh, is part of the whole new 12 series i'll show you the whole lineup here smaller bookshelves tower center blah 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 I did some comparisons, more than I would usually do in a review. I compared it to the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s that just passed through this room very recently, the Klipsch RP600M, which is actually back in the house. I'm very happy to have a pair here. I never actually had a pair here in Brooklyn. I always listened to them at the CNET office in Manhattan. And also the Bowers & Wilkins 607 S2 Anniversary Edition speakers. Right now, I'm just going to tell you about the speaker. It's obviously a two-way, six and a half inch woofer, one inch textile, uh, soft dome tweeter, rear port. Uh, so as for all the specs, I'm going to put them on screen right now for your perusal and approval. Um, but the numbers are just the numbers. To me, it's, it is all about the sound quality. And, you know, it's kind of hard to nail down the sound quality because it's a pretty neutral sounding speaker. Nothing jumps out. It's not bright, definitely not bright. Bass is very satisfying. Mid-range seems very neutral. So <clears throat> from a reviewer's perspective, it's much easier to talk about a speaker that has some obvious personality to it, right? The 12.2 is pretty low key about that sort of thing. So the first ones up, for comparison's sake, were the Klipsch RP600Ms. Those were more forward in their presentation, more immediate, more like, yep, yeah, right there kind of sound, livelier. But the 12.2s had a fuller, you know, sweeter presentation. The, uh, I wouldn't call the 600Ms bright, but I would call them <laughs> exciting in, in all senses of that word, right? And the 12.2s took it back a couple of notches from there. But the 12.2 was, was a fuller, more fleshed out sounding speaker by comparison to the 600M. I don't think I've ever talked about Leo Kotke in a review. He's an acoustic guitarist, kind of folk, not really. A lot of his records are instrumental, but this particular one, my father's face, Really nice, great sound. Now, what's weird about this record as a recording is the miking. Sometimes the miking of the guitar is very close. Sometimes it's very wet, reverberant sounding. <clears throat> with that, well, with all that in mind, I would say that the 12.2 was better than the 600M in getting the the acoustic quality of the guitar, the sound of the wood, the resonance of the guitar was better on the 12.2. But the 600M, in terms of the gradations of dynamics and the finger picking sounds and that sort of stuff, was, was better on the 600M. So it's, it's kind of a tie, but again, these things really come down to, it's not a matter of which one is the best or better, it's a matter of what you want in your sound. Do you want sweetness? Do you want a rounder, fuller sound? Or do you want that, that bite, that attack sound? could go either way, you know. <laughs> That's what makes this fun. That's what makes picking a speaker challenging and it's part of the journey of figuring out what you want from your sound.
most of the most of the tracks on this Leo Kaki record are instrumentals, but there's a few vocal tracks, and my favorite by far is Jack Gets Up. And uh, Leo Kaki's voice is deep and resonant, and I was getting more of that from the 12.2 than the 600M. But everything's a balance here. The 600M, just in terms of inflection and phrasing and that kind of detail and and life. I think the 600M was, was doing a better job. So Angelo, Angelo Barlamenti, he did music for a lot of David Lynch's movies. You know David Lynch did Twin Peaks, but he also did Eraserhead, Lost Highway, some of my favorite movies of all time. And Barlamenti's music has that kind of creepy, noir -y, he's just really good. That's why Lynch uses him over and over again. And this, this one track, and I don't know where it came from, but it, it's kind of raunchy guitars, deep reverb, pounding drum, just kind of a grinding sound. And I'm comparing the 12.2 with the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s. And the Bronze 100s just have more spatial depth going on there. And the 12.2s can seem a little, it just seem flatter than the bronze. As for rock music, well, I pulled out the replacements. Yes, every now and then I got to do some replacements. And this track, it's an extra track here, and it's Route 66. And I just pedal to the metal time. And I like the way these speakers handle power. Actually, they sound good at quiet levels, medium-ish levels, and fairly loud levels for a small stand mount speaker. Um, but I would say they're, they're good at sort of that medium range is the best, you know, not too soft, not too loud, kind of just right there in the middle. And you just feel you're in the, you're in the zone with the 12.2s when you play them that way. The, the, you know, these speakers, um, mid range is pretty special. It's very transparent. Um, and I was playing this Pascal Roge, uh, Eric Satie record, and it's not, Showing me the record now, it's not a great recording. It's a little too clangy for me, for my taste, but it, it, his playing and his uh, shading of dynamics and stuff are fantastic. And I think for Eric Satie's music, that's like crucially important. And I think that the 12.2s did a phenomenal job on that score. As for the 12.2s top end, the treble is sweet. It's relaxed. It doesn't call attention to itself. You're not like drawn to the detail. It's not that kind of sounding tweeter. And when I switched over to the B&W 607 S2 Anniversary Edition, the tone character was much more, well, brighter, but not too bright, but brighter definitely on the 607 and just more airier, more spacious, more open sounding on top. And going back to the 12.2, it was darker. Again, this, you know, it, it's, this isn't a matter of picking which is the best. It's a matter of picking the one that sort of fits your taste. I think the 607 S2 is a more transparent, clearer sounding speaker. But it is a smaller speaker and it sounds smaller. It's also like $100 more expensive per pair. As for the bottom end on the 12.2, it's, it's definitely ample. <laughs> for its size, it has amazingly well in low end extension. No problem there. Um, definition is good, not superlative or anything, but good. It's, you know what it is? I'm, I keep circling around here. It is a mid-range centric speaker. That's where it really shines. That's its, uh, its key strength is delivering beautiful mid-range. You hear it on vocals, you hear it on guitars, on pianos. It sounds very, very neutral, very, very unforced. So there you have it, the Wharfdale Diamond 12.2. It's a, let's just say a continuation of the Diamond uh, timeline here, right? It's always been that one that you, it's a go-to line for Wharfdale. If you're an audiophile and you're just starting out and you, and you have a leaning towards British sounding speakers, a little more laid back, a little gentler, a little sweeter, this is a great place to start. Uh, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and we're rounding out 2020. <laughs> what a year. 
uh, good things are coming in 2021 in audio and in this listing room there's going to be some big changes that you'll start to see I'm thinking in the, around the middle of January um, and that's going to be really exciting so I am continuously trying to improve this channel and make it better and better and I think you're going to see big changes in 2021. What else? Well you can subscribe and you can be part of this movement no matter where you are in the world right please subscribe to this youtube channel if you already have thank you so much for doing that uh if if you want to do more check out the patreon which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac uh we got playlists you know i keep thinking i got to tell you specific uh, things to check out on the playlist and one of them is this interview I did with Nelson Pass in his home in California and inside his lab and we take a tour around the room and he shows you all of this really cool stuff I mean I had such a great time that day I had a great time all the time with Nelson Pass but that specific part was just so good um, I've been talking about Joe the Cop a lot lately because, again, as standout episodes go, when I went to Joe's place in Brooklyn, if you've missed that one or you missed me referring to it recently, please, by all means, and I'll put a link right up there so you can go directly to Joe's place and see he built these huge horn speakers. He work, was working on a turntable of his own design. The guy is amazing. Um, there's so many. There's just so many. Oh, and when I went to the Grado factory and I took a tour here in Brooklyn of where they make not only just headphones, but also phono cartridges. They've been in that building since 1953, as memory recalls. And John Grado takes us through the building and you see the workers building cartridges, making headphones, really something. So I think we're good. I think my work here is at last complete. So thank you again so much for watching and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.